two different places and so to make sure that we're not going to miss the <laughs> recording for any technical reasons so you're going to have it on big blue button and you're going to have it on youtube both of them all right uh, so uh let's start uh and let me see if there are and uh, many people didn't respond to the poll which is okay for okay. now um i saw somebody wanted to say something Anyways, if you want to uh, speak or say something, you don't need to ask, raise your hand or anything. Just activate your microphone and start talking. That's perfectly okay and absolutely no problem with it. Hi, Javier. Hi, Javier. All right. So uh, let's start. Uh, we uh, last time uh, we um, let me just bring uh, the, what we talked about last time. We created. Uh, couple of modules one for employee and one for utilities uh, we, we said we're gonna uh, create a, um, a module called utility and put all the stuff that we uh, want to use throughout the semester and we're gonna carry out with us and all the workshops that you're gonna use yeah, they are designed to um, let you submit your uh, utilities uh, uh, classes if you want to so if for example you are actually using the utils um, object uh, the, the utils module to to do the string copy and stuff like that in your workshops all you need to do when you submit your workshop is add a U at the beginning of the submission so to submit your utils you put tilde fardat salimandu slash submit and then over here the name of the workshop whatever the name of the workshop is you go 244 for example workshop 3 and then over here instead of saying p1 uh, zaa it will say up1 zaa so this additional u uh, so in here i'm going to say enter the u at the beginning a u uh, as first letter of submission submits the utils module so if you ever want to use your utils module because it's really handy and, and you will see like as a programmer as you progress through the things you have some personal functions that help you do stuff throughout your applications you you can always um, put them in the utils module and and use it so um, uh, are we okay with this all right perfect Okay. Uh, sorry, Professor, can I ask a question, please? please go ahead. Go ahead, Ali. Uh, so uh, we don't need to name it as utils, or we had to. You have to add uh, name it utils with capital U dot H. So the name is mandatory because that's what you that's what the U does over there. So it adds a module utils now. Any class, anything, any object, any function that you have, you can add it to this module. Module. Um, it doesn't matter so if you have like a like whatever you you have you can just add it to this module and, you, and you'll be okay and don't okay. forget that you can have many classes many functions everything to add to a single module there is no problem with that so if you have a class you can just add your class over here class my stuff and then create your class and then add the oh sorry not here <laughs> you uh, add your stuff here class my stuff and then you put your my stuff functionalities over here my stuff and then you do whatever you are doing in here so you can actually add classes anything you want to utils to carry it around uh, in your project and in your in your workshops and your projects all right so for this utils that we had i created uh, a couple of functions uh, one uh, two functions one strlen and the other one an overloaded function that was done in two different ways uh, we created uh, the strlen and we created the str copy because these are the things that uh, 
I wanted to use at the moment. So uh, we can always add other stuff to it as we go uh, further in our uh, project. And by the way, anything I write in here, you can co copy and paste it in your code. You can either cite it or no, not. It's not important because I'm your teacher. You can um, copy any code that I have and use it freely without citing. If you cite it, I, I'll appreciate it. But if you don't, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so any code that you see I provide, you can use it without any citing. Other than that, then you can cite it too. <clears throat> you have to cite it. Um, so, so that's the utils. Then we started with the, the class employee. So we said we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to create, we're going to try to encapsulate a class called employee and um, put all the things that an employee needs inside a class. And we said that uh, an employee has a name, an employee has an employee number, an employee has a salary. Um, and these are the stuff the employee needs to carry around with our uh, perspective of the application. But by the way, now to just make the thing a little more real, I'm gonna, wow, that's way too big. How do I make it smaller? Ah, I can't, I think. Hmm, I have to stop it to be able to resize it, so I'm not going to do this. It's too big. Forget it. Okay, I just wanted to add uh, my uh, 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 video over here. I'll do it later on. All right, so uh, so name, employee number, and salary is the what we want from the employee. And then we said uh, when we actually want to use this thing, uh, we need to be able to set the employee name and we need to be able to display the employee. So uh, to, to set the employee name, uh, let me just separate the screen in two. Uh, to set the employee name, we said we're going to set the name to a new character string with the length of the name that is coming in to set it. Uh, let me just do it like this so we can see it. So dynamically allocate a character string to the size that we want to set the employee. Uh, name to and uh, keep at the address in M name. Therefore, M name will fit exactly what the incoming name has in in its data. Then we're going to copy everything from uh, name to M name. Set the employee number. Set the salary, and we are done. So that was what we did for setting. Um, are we okay with that? <laughs> Hi, can you remind me again, like why all the names need to put a M like underscore? Oh, okay. It? So, sure. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Oh, so, uh, but what, what, why we do that? So the thing is that um, because we have so many variables everywhere, uh, I want a way to be able to uh, recognize which variables are member variables or what we call them as attributes. So these are essentially member variables or what we call it attributes okay to be able to like if I want to go to in main over here and include employee.h <clears throat> and I need to uh, find certain attribute in it so if I actually write over here employee employee oh I need to have namespace stds I forgot my apologies using namespace stds so if I want to say over here employee e and I want to say e dot m underline as soon as you do that all the attributes will be listed automatically therefore it's easier much it's much easier to manage the attributes of the class so it's not going to be mistaken by any variables that are not a member variable of employee that end underline <clears throat> um, helps us find the names properly so that's the standard that only we have in uh, the OOP 244 class of ours so this semester you are doing it and ne next semester they may be another standard but this is what we are going to follow um, are we okay with this yes thank you no problem then all right so so that's why I, I really appreciate if you do that. This is something that one of the rules and regulations for the coding. And coding style is something that we have to always follow whichever company we are in, whichever company we are uh, 
doing work with, that's uh, that, that rule that we have to follow and there's kind of no way around it. It's an extremely important thing to do. So, uh, <clears throat> the, the next thing we needed to do with this employee thingy, obviously, <clears throat> because I have the employee set up as follows, um, if I just create an employee and, and try to do something with it, if I just say employee over here, E, and, and I say <clears throat> E.display, obviously, if I do something like this, the, 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 the program is going to get confused because it tries to actually run the employee and it fails. As you see, the return code is something ginormous over here, which means uh, something went wrong in this program. It crashed. Uh, that return uh, value should be always zero. The reason is that <clears throat> in my display, first of all, I have to make sure that everything is set and done properly before I print anything. So let me just close um, this one. Yeah. So I need to first make sure everything is set and done. So when I'm printing over here, I have to make sure that the M name is actually not equal to null PTR. <clears throat> Because if that's the case, then in uh, my employee is not in a in a good state. The state of the employee is not set. Uh, so, um, and then I'll try to run this, and I'll see it still fails. The reason is that if I run the program, you will see that when the employee gets created, the values employ inside employee are all garbage because I did not, you see, this is the, the, the pointer, this is the name, this is the salary, so everything in here is garbage. When I just say e.display, it goes to the display and it says is name, because we said every unused pointer must be set to null, uh, so we can actually pinpoint which one is used and which one is not. This one sees there is a number in there, but it doesn't know that the number is garbage, it just knows it's a number. Number is a number. The only thing that identifies that a pointer is not used is to make it zero. So it thinks that it has something in it, but it doesn't. Because of this fact, and in here I have to say else, uh, on, uh, I'm going to say C out, uh, empty employee or onset employee subject, uh, onset employee object. So if that's the case, I need to have a function to initialize everything to its default value. So this initialize essentially sets the employee employee to a, and this is extremely important, recognizable empty state. So I can actually make sure that it is actually empty. So this is extremely important for us to, to understand that we need, whenever we are creating an object of any type, we need to make that object, uh, we need to be able to flag that object to be in an empty state. And this initialization is actually doing it. So now if I actually run the program again, calling the init beforehand, so I'll say employee E, then I'm going to say E dot init and initialize it. Now when I run the program, the program is not going to crash, but, oh, but it will say, oh, build errors, what happened? See out undeclared identifier. I did something wrong somewhere. Let me just see. Oh because we are using C out, let me just, uh, I'm using it more than once, so I'm going to actually say over here, using namespace STD, so, and I can now remove these STDs over here, because I only had two, and I say the heck with it, I'm gonna, just going to put it, but now it's better. So when I run it now, you will see that it actually runs and says onset employee object, so this, this, uh, employee is not set. Okay, so if that's so, so now we set the initial uh, the, the 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 object to an empty state, and now if we set it, obviously the object is going to work properly. So now if I actually go over here and say e dot set uh, Fred Soleil, and I'm going to put an employee number 
and a salary something like that if I run the program it actually recognizes that Fred Soleil is in there and actually is going to print the values for me so the difference between this since this set is that it this actually has a valid memory set to it so when I actually run it it goes to initialization oh sorry one more time so first it creates the employee with all garbage in it so if I bring it over here we'll see this all garbage in it then it goes to init sets the name to a standard null pointer so we know it's not unused employee number to an impossible value and salary to an impossible value we can actually put minus one over there too so all impossible values over there to just make sure that uh, we can recognize this is an empty state and then after that is done Sorry. the init and set these uh, are all uh, functions that you provided or because there's two columns void employee two column in it i don't understand this oh okay so um first of all let me see who was the person who was asked the question <laughs> Sahar. oh Sahar. okay so Sahar, when we create when we create a class a class can contain a function so keep your microphone on so we can have a conversation okay, okay so so uh when when i create a struct employee we said that struct is actually a class right mm -hmm. this is a class yeah. do we are we okay with this yes okay now a class can contain functions in them correct yes so i'm gonna say in here i'm gonna actually declare and tell to the compiler hey compiler employee has a member function or what we call it a method so it has a member function or we can call it a method I rather say method because it's known everywhere so it has a method called <laughs> init are we okay with this yes <clears throat> now because this is the header file and in here I'm just declaring that employee has an init in it <laughs> in it inside of it <clears throat> where do mm -hmm. I actually put the definition for it where do I say what in it is I go to mm -hmm. the CPP file with the same name of the header file of the employee and I uh -huh. write the function in it but to tell to the compiler that this function that I'm defining is the same that I declared over here I put a scope resolution scope resolution is something like apostrophe s in English so in here as if I'm saying employees in it <laughs> uh -huh. this is so this Scope, scope resolution, resolution is like apostrophe as yes. it means in it belongs to employee so that if I have three classes they all have in it functions not gonna confuse which one is what mm -hmm. got it so yes, yes this is that this is for definition so essentially I define uh, a functions code by adding a scope resolution to make sure if employee understands that this in it actually belongs to the to the class Are we thank okay? you all right. Yeah. All right. So now the initialization is complete, and uh, we go back to our main. And in our main, we'll see that I have the employee that is now all zero minus one and minus one. Now I'm going to say set the employee. So when I go to set employee, it comes over here. This is null, no problem. It's going to say <clears throat> new characters. They are yada yada yada, and it's going to uh, set it to whatever is supposed to be set. Uh, which uh, uh, allocate the memory and then copy the name into it set the employee number set the salary and goes out and then now we can actually display properties because M name is not null and as you see it's not only not null but when you look at the address address is actually pointing at a location that has Fred Soleil in it so it comes in prints all the information and goes out and program ends so in here I have two problems one uh, two major problems <clears throat> uh, problem number one is that I have memory leak because when e.set is called it allocated memory but I did not empty uh, clear that memory because of that fact that each part of dynamic any dynamic memory that is allocated must be uh, 
deallocated by me too, I need to create another function that I call it finalize to actually finalize everything and make sure I don't have any memory leak. And what do I do in that? I simply delete the memory the way I allocated it. I allocated a me uh, memory with square brackets. I delete the same memory with square brackets. Now I'm going to come in prg.cpp and uh, uh, deallocated. But I want to point out something. This is the most notorious type of bug you can have. If I run the program now, <clears throat> you will see that it actually exits with code zero, which means it says it's successful. But it was not. You had memory leak. So dynamic memory allocation is very tricky when it comes to memory leak and things like that, because these type of things cannot be uh, identified by compiler. Compiler doesn't know that a memory was allocated because you did it and therefore it will not delete it. You are responsible to do so. So you have to be very careful about this and not only this, just take a look. So I'm going to add the finalize over here <clears throat> and that's why we have the Valgrind uh, thingy. So when you actually run your program, you will see that we execute your program using Valgrin. Val what Valgrin does is that it checks the memory before execution, runs your program, makes sure everything's okay, and after it's done, it checks to make sure that the memories are released. And if not, the Valgrin's going to tell you they wrote that tool actually specifically for this. But anyways, if I finalize it now, everything is fine and dandy. So when I actually run the program now, and I come to initialization like this so it initializes everything then I'm gonna set it which is beautiful it sets the uh, uh, it allocates the memory copies and does everything then it comes to display displays everything properly and then after it's done and everything is displayed where is my display and everything is displayed after everything is displayed it finalizes it which means it goes over there the the, the memory that is has Fred Soleil in it it says I'm gonna give it back to operating system and doing so it will be all gone and now we have a safe and nice program uh, to work with this program has still one problem that I'll explain but we'll see so are we okay down to this point or any questions or are we okay with this are we okay with this? I like the class where you actually stop and ask questions. Please do so. Uh, interrupt me and start talking. Um, and if you, for any reason, logged in as listen only as I asked you not to, uh, please uh, uh, write your question in a chat. And if I don't notice it and anybody else sees it, please let me know that... Uh, a message was sent through the chat so, so I can answer it. Gita, you had a, you said you're not okay with this. How can I help? Uh, and by oh, the way, morning, if, Professor. Yeah, uh, accidentally I clicked uh, the no, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm clear. Oh, okay, good. Perfect. Thank you. No problem. All right. And there is no problem. I rather everybody to click, misclick rather than not click. Misclick and answer incorrectly and later on let me know. <clears throat> or, uh, yeah. That's it. So uh, that's that. But so this is down to this point. Everything looks good and fine and dandy. Uh, so what is the th other problem? The other problem is that what if I want to set that employee to something else? If I say over here, e dot init. Oh, sorry, e dot set, and I want to set it to I don't know, Homer Simpson. And the employee number is three two three two three, and salary is one two three five yada yada, and I don't know, something like that. And display it again. So if I run the program like this, what's going to happen? If I run the program, you will see that there's absolutely no problem. It runs perfectly, but again, I have memory leak. Why do I have memory leak? Let's take a look at the execution and I'm going to walk through the execution and show you exactly what's wrong with it. So I'm going to put this thing on draw so I can draw something as we are going through it. That's good. So the program gets executed as we know. So E is going to have over here some garbage in it. Uh, e, uh, then E is initialized. 
and it's uh, set so we come over here it sets the name so let's say this is M name so it sets the oh not that it sets the it sets the uh, M name to a piece of memory like this and inside that piece of memory at line 14 it's gonna put Fred Soleil so this is what happens right now so when it actually copies this M name Fred Soli will be pointed to it so so this essentially is M name are we okay with this all right now that we've done this and understand how it works um, half of you are a little late to respond but it's okay I presume we're good so um, so this is fine it, it sets it and, and everything's fine and dandy then it comes over here and displays it and we see that the display is actually showing everything nicely and then it goes to the next set and that's where problem happens so now in here it says M name is equal to a, set it to Homer Simpson now it wants to do that so what happens it allocates a piece of memory somewhere so it allocates a piece of memory somewhere and then it says put that address in M name so what happens is that this link will be severed over here and M name is gonna point to a new piece of memory and then into that one will be copied the uh, the Homer Simpson so this is essentially what happens so it comes over here salary is uh, printed and everything is printed so as we see the the output oh the uh, I should actually print the output first so it's done and it comes over here and displays it and we'll see it's displayed why it's displayed because it goes from here and prints Homer Simpson so it should be good and it is good it prints it nicely and everything's fine and dandy the problem over here is that what it's going to do after this is when it goes to finalize when it goes to finalize it says delete M name and what we have is Homer Simpson so what happens as soon as it deletes it and gets out this is what happens this link is already severed we know that we don't have this link anymore and and it's deleted so Homer Simpson is gone and program ends so what happens is that an M name is destroyed and gone because E is going to be gone so what be we left in memory is Fred Soleil that is memory leak so that still is a problem are we okay with this <coughs> Maria you have a question no oh, okay I thought Maria has a question anyway so so how do we fix this problem to following the rules of dynamic memory allocation which essentially is at any moment you are setting something at any moment you are setting something you have to first delete the old one so in here I'm gonna say delete M name first and then allocate it what's good about this is that because we followed the rule of setting the M name to null PTR the first one that is going to get called it's not gonna cause any trouble and everything's gonna be fine and dandy because uh, M name is null and delete null has the mechanism to ignore it so if M name is null, nothing happens all good 
but if it's not null, it's going to deallocate the memory. So what happens is that when I run the program now, it creates the employee, initializes everything, sets the name, but before he wants to set the name, he wants to delete the name. Name is null, so that delete won't do anything. Memory is allocated and copied and everything. Now M name has Fred Soleil in it. It comes over here, prints it, life is beautiful, nothing's wrong with it. Fred Soleil is printed. Then it comes to set again, and this time when it comes to set, it says I'm gonna first delete. M name now is pointing to Fred Soleil. So it first wipes that one out, then allocates a new one. Therefore, this Fred Soleil over here will be deleted and gone, and uh, it's gonna have a a new one and it's going to display it which is very fine and at the end when it finalizes it finalizes uh, it, it deletes uh, the Homer Simpson thingy and everything is gone and there is no memory leak so there are two facts it's kind of a review that I'm telling you right now about dynamic memory allocation first is every unused piece of uh, pointer that we have, we have to set it to null pointer. Also, before allocating anything, we have to delete it to make sure there is nothing assigned to it. If we follow the first rule and keep the pointers that are not used to null PTR, this delete will cause no problem. And it just guarantees there is no uh, memory leak. And everything's going to go fine and dandy. And then after, and <clears throat> there is another rule that we need to follow, but we're not gonna, we don't need it at this moment, is that whenever you delete the name, you have to set that to null pointer because it's unused. But because it is back to back, right after this, I'm doing an allocation, the null pointer is not necessary. But if I had a function that would have done it just by itself, like finalize over here, <clears throat> or yeah, the allocate or whatever we call, we could put it uh, M name to null PTR at the moment at that point. So <clears throat> I'm gonna change this finalize to deallocate. And now in here the allocate why is it giving me an error? Because <clears throat> the spelling on the left-hand side, there's oh, some... Oh, yes, 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 sorry. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now it would be nice to actually write over here, uh, M name is set to null PTR. So the, 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 the standard, like the standard of dynamic, the, the, sta the, the rules that we have to follow with dynamic memory allocation, that every time you delete a, a pointer... <clears throat> you must set it to null. The reason that we set it over here because the allocate is something that I'm not sure when it's going to get called. It could be called anywhere. And because of that fact, because of that fact, I'm setting the name to null so to flag it that this is deleted pointer. Okay? Uh, and that's that. So now everything is good. Um, like, yeah. Uh, and, and we are... Um, fine with this and this is almost a safe employee to create. Are we okay with this? Victor. Victor. You said no. What's up? Victor, are you there? Oh, Victor's completely cut off from uh, audio. Uh, sorry, Professor, I have a question. Uh, so, uh, at workshops that I submitted yesterday, part two, uh, I did the allocation, but as I see now, I did it wrong. Will you decrease mark because of that? Because, like, I didn't know that. No, I no, did but, it wrong. but your program was compiled and submitted, right? Yes, yes. Okay, a bit no problem. Yeah, it's okay, not that you did it wrong. You didn't follow the standard because I didn't teach it to you. But that workshop was not requiring it because I didn't teach it to you. So you're fine. From now on, please do this, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right? 
and let's see if Victor is going to come back. Victor! Um, hi, Professor. Yes. While I was working on workshop one, I encountered a bug which I would like to know if um, it's possible to call that a memory leak. Okay, yeah. so first of all, when I tried to compile, everything seemed fine. But when I tried to submit, I was getting this um, segmentation fault. Oh, okay. Okay, so, and then... Uh, seg yeah, let yeah. me explain. Segmentation... Oh, go ahead. Com co co complete your question. My apologies. Go ahead. Okay. So the only thing I did different was to create a new folder on Matrix, move everything there, because I tried to read up on that book and I saw something about memory in it. And the only th different thing I did was to create a new folder on Matrix, move everything in there and then it's submitted successfully uh, so uh, that, that 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 i don't segment you know essentially what segmentation fault means so no, each I program don't. runs in a segment of memory right so when your program gets executed it gets loaded into the computer's memory and then it's executed do are we okay with this yeah. Okay. So yeah. So when you when you execute a program, this is how how the program is run. <clears throat> the operating system takes the program from hard drive, puts it in memory, then tells the CPU to go to this part of memory and start executing your program. That's how executables are are executed. Are we okay with this? Is what could cause a segmentation? Oh yeah, yeah. That, I'm going to explain. I just want to make sure you understand this part first. How the programs are executed. Yeah. Okay, now right. if your executable somehow refers to any place outside of this segment, goes outside of its own territory in memory, the operating system stops you and tells you there is a segmentation fault. Got it? Yeah. What yeah, is the cause for it? Thousands of different things. For example, you can create an array and exceed the limit of the array. That's segmentation fault. For example, you can do, in, in IPC 144, you do a scanf, you forget to put the ampersand. There's a segmentation fault. <clears throat> because the address passed to scanf by mistake becomes a, another address. Or <clears throat> you have an address that is a pointer or an address of any kind of array that is not set properly and you try to use it. Now, in your case, I have to see the code to tell you what was the segmentation fault for. But segmentation fault, usually, it was dealing with files, correct? Yes. So yes. I, I can presume that the problem was that it couldn't find the file. Therefore, the open procedure would have been faulted. And because of that, the file pointer would have, wouldn't have have been set to the proper value, therefore read and write from the file will go to some place that it wasn't set and therefore you would get a segmentation fault. That's my guess, but I have to look at your code to see if that was, that was the reason. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, thank you, Professor. No problem. So, professor, you know, I kind of, I submitted um, some, I think about 30 minutes or one hour late because of that um, bug. And I was just thinking to myself that if you were to see my code, I do not think you would take out 40% of my math because of that bug. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, that bug, my dear, there are, two, there are two factors for the thing. Being on time is extremely important. That's why we have that 40% thingy added to the thing. So it goes if you are so facing any problem immediately, you have to contact me and I'll try to find it or uh, find a tutor to help you or post the message on Microsoft Teams and we'll try to fix it. That's a standard that was set into the uh, into the system. I know uh, losing 40% sounds very high. It's not actually 40%. You lose 60%, I think, or 60 or 40. I don't remember. But anyways, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that uh, that is set to make sure everything's done on time. And... Um, your workshops are actually 10 days after I publish it, right? So if you face any problem, immediately contact me and try to fix it. And if I, if you try to find me and I do not answer you on time, so I cannot, I don't respond to your help 
uh, call for help on time, then I will give you the extension and I will not reduce any marks. Is that fair? Okay. Okay. So, so if you see any problem, there is any problem, and you cannot not that it's like the due date is three minutes from now. Then you send me a help message, and I cannot get you. But if like it's two days to the due date, and you cannot fix any problem, that the problem, you call for help, and I cannot help you with it, then I will grant you uh, extension. I will give you extension to do it because it was that you could not get the help you required to fix the problem. Okay. But uh, sadly, sadly, uh, not your case, but sadly, uh, around, I would say, 50 to 70% of the time, students ask this literally an hour before the due date. They leave it for the last minute. It's better not to do so. If you, if, if you hit a wall, you, tr you have to try to fix it for a day, and if you can't, you see it's a day past and you're still struggling to understand what the heck is going on, you immediately try to contact me, please. Manjit, you have a question? No, so, sorry, Professor. Victor asked his question in the chat. Oh, I'll take, it, I'll take a look. Let me just... Okay. <clears throat> uh, any need for line 29? Of course there is. If we have a deallocate function, line 29, of course you have to always delete it. If by line 29 you mean deleting, yes, setting something to null will not deallocate it. It just sets it to null. Setting deleting will deallocate, setting it to null makes it identifiable, so it is actually deleted. If we already have a deallocate function. Hello, Professor. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Victor. Perfect. Loud and clear. Yeah. Good. So uh, I think the the line numbering thing was a mistake. I was talking about line 13. Is there any need for the line 13 if we already have a deallocate function? Oh, you mean just right over here, deallocate? Yeah. Since sure. it's the same thing. No. Oh, yeah, of course. The... There's no problem. It's, that's called, that's, uh, uh, Victor, that is. Uh, writing a modular program and the taste of different people like some people say okay I'm gonna call the deallocate the other people with the, the another program is gonna say when you when you're a seasoned programmer you will say okay when I call the deallocate it's gonna jump over here call it delete set it to null come back over here do it so three instructions extra I want my file my, my program to run faster so I'm just gonna write delete over here because I know immediately afterwards I'm gonna overwrite it with a with a thing. So, in our case, it is much better to do this, so you're absolutely right. You are 100% right. We have the deallocate. I'm going to put the deallocate over here. No problem with okay. that. Okay. Um, uh, another question. Go ahead. I, I think maybe I'm the one um, mixing it up. I, I feel since, from your explanation, it's best to deallocate or um, delete the um, the memory that we took from the CPU right after the end of the program. Would it not be wise to put the deallocate function as the last function call in the main function, irrespective of whatever we are doing in the code? Say, in my main function, my last function call will be the deallocate function. You are 200% right. Not 100%. And that's my next point. Actually, not next point, a point after that. I'm going to tell you, we can actually make this automatic, Victor. So we don't have to worry about it. Now we can make a mistake. I can forget to call the allocate. I can call the allocate where I'm not supposed to. We can actually make this automatic. So any object at the end of their lifetime automatically call the function the allocate. We will do that. Okay? okay, but but okay. but that's two steps further. First, I have to talk about privacy. Oh, then we go. No, no, don't apologize. That's a perfect, uh, natural uh, conclusion of what I'm doing right now, which is perfectly correct. Thank you. Okay, so uh, so let me just uh, go to the next step. So down to this point, uh, anybody else have any questions? I love this class. This class is becoming very uh, interactive. It's beautiful. So. Uh, oh. 
Uh, there's ahead. another comment in the in the chat, in the chat. which oh, I think okay. a lot of. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Why is the main CP and main profit different? Well, because I don't want you to manually create the uh, the output. The tester program should be something that tests the exact same thing in a different way. And I have to make sure you did not change main.cpp. Not only that, when you are writing a program, I'll give you a test uh, file that is very small so you can program and test with it. Then I'll give you a big one. You can, after everything with the small one works, you can test it with the big one manually. But when I'm testing you, I'm going to use the big one to make sure everything is crystal clear and nicely done. And remember, unit tests are always like this. Unit tests must follow the same logic, but different data. And to do that, I need to create a new main to make it different. Okay? I had to make it work both versions. Uh, if you had to make it work in both versions, it means on the first one, you didn't make it right. That's the reason you have to have the second one. If with the second one it didn't work properly, it means you worked around the problem, which is not fixing a solution, fixing a problem. To work around is not correct. You have to fix a problem in its root so it works everywhere properly. Um, I hope that answers the question. All right. Uh, so. Uh, any other question before we continue to the next section? All right. So now please take a look. I'm going to come to main. Obviously, the main is going to work properly when I run it. <clears throat> I initialized, I deallocated everything <clears throat> perfectly, and it runs nicely. But let's say you have written this program and gave it to me. And I am using your employee.h to do whatever I want to do. <clears throat> so I'll come. My apologies. Let me just clear my throat. It's, it's, I've got to have a glass of water because I'm losing my voice. Just give me two seconds. My apologies. Are we okay? Can you hear me? Anyone? Can you hear me? One, two, three. Yes, yes. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so let's say you have written this program and I am using your program in main. So you are the person who designed the employee and I'm using it. And in here I would say, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say e dot m name, And I'm going to say, what is this M name? I don't know. I'm just going to delete it. So in here, I'm going to say delete M name. And I run the program. And this is what happens. It crashes. So what went wrong in here? The problem over here was that, see, it, <laughs> it crashed, yeah. So the problem in here is that I, as an outsider, or anyone, had access to parts of employee that were not supposed to be accessed, like name, employee number, yada, yada. These are not something that I need to access it at all. So because of that, I have to prevent people to, to use it. What do I do to do that? I add privacy. I'm going to call this private, and I'm going to set the rest of the stuff public. So doing so, I'm saying, outsiders of employee cannot access the private properties and if somebody tries to access the private properties when they run they're gonna hit uh, get a syntax error saying hey what are you doing over here that uh, 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 what should we call it the, the, that uh, member variable uh, this uh, 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 M name that is a member variable is uh, is inaccessible you cannot use it you cannot change it and that makes my code safe now if I run it it's gonna run properly so the parts and pieces that I do not need I change it 
set it to private by creating a private label. Anything after private is inaccessible by outsiders and anything that is public is accessible by outsiders and that adds privacy to the to the class. Are we okay with this? And the next step over here is that from now on let's not use struct anymore for uh, classes. We can actually use class. Why I write class and what is the difference between a class and a structure? So a class and a structure are identical in C++, no difference. Class and structure are identical, but structures are public by default. Class, structs and classes are private by default, which means I can just not write this private over here and it will still be private if I want to set say the employee number e dot m doesn't even it doesn't even show me the the contents anymore so it's as if it doesn't exist it only shows the public ones but let's say I I write it and I'm gonna set it to one two three if I actually do that and try to run it then it's gonna give me the exact same error I had before saying what the heck you're doing this thing is inac inaccessible so classes are public uh, private by default and uh, structures are public by default are we okay with this <laughs> All right, Javier. Yeah, yes, sir. Go ahead. You said no. You said you're not okay with this. No, I don't understand the concept clearly, sir. Con uh, which the concept? Private and they use uh, the, the one about private and public. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, stay with me. Okay, stay with me. Uh, you are a class. Um, let's say my friend right and yes sir we are going out to have coffee I gave you this example before if I ask if I want to borrow two dollars from you I'm gonna say Javier can I have a couple of dollars I want to get coffee I forgot my wallet you are my friend uh, okay. you're gonna gladly give it to me correct yes sir. that's when I ask you through your functionality of giving money to lending money I called your lend money function and your lend money function went to your property and reduced two dollars of your money and returned it to me. Do we understand this? Yeah, it's more like adding the privacy to our address, yes, to the attributes of our class. Exactly. So, but if I'm coming with you, we are going in front of the coffee shop and I put my hand in your pocket looking for two dollars, that's wrong. Yeah, that's that's wrong. So mm -hmm. that creates the privacy. It's it gives access to what it's supposed to be, and it removes the access what you are not supposed to be have access to. It. Are we okay with this? Okay, sir. Yes. All Absolutely right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. So much. you. No problem. Okay. So that's that. So uh, that's the thing, and uh, uh, so we know that. And now let's go to uh, Victor. Victor, are you with me? I think yes, sir. Oh, perfect. So, uh, let me let me show you what's going on over here. When we are talking about, uh, I just wanted to make sure that you're listening. You can mute yourself. That's okay. Uh, it looks like you're on a motorcycle. You're in a car or something. <laughs> but, I'm in the class, actually. All right. Okay. So, 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 um, uh, we know for a fact that everybody will forget to initialize something and everybody will forget to deallocate something. Because of that fact, the, a mechanism is added to C++ and all object-oriented languages to be able to call certain functions when you need, when the function is coming to life and call other functions when an object is going out of life. Okay? so uh, it's dying so this mechanism looks like a function but is extremely important to remember that these are not functions these are requests for procedure calls these are not functions you cannot call them uh, 
uh, you should not call them because the action of calling these procedures look like a function call but it is not a function call so these type of things are called constructors and destructors how do we create these procedures it's as follows when you have a class called employee you can create a constructor by creating a procedure called employee without a return statement because this is not a function it is a constructor the job of this function is to do what is needed right after the object is born so now I'm gonna come into uh, .cpp over here and I'm gonna write the employee as I did before so I'm gonna write employee scope resolution employee again and as you see constructors share the name of the class they are exactly the same name and in here I'm gonna say init and because initialization is something that is not supposed to be done halfway through the object I will actually take this and put it in a private part because nobody should be able to initialize the object but the birth of the object when the object is actually born and that's why I'm putting it in a constructor so when the object is born the constructor will be called automatically and it will call in it and initializes the object now take a look and I come over here it's gonna tell me that in it is uh, uh, inaccessible which is very fine I did it on purpose so I'll remove it is private okay so now when I run the program look what happens as soon as the employee wants to get created the constructor is called and therefore initialization is called and therefore the object is initialized so by adding a constructor I do not need to call the init myself and at any moment of time that an object is created the constructor is called so the init is called through the construction action and we have the exact same thing for the time that the object dies so this is what we call a destructor or sometimes they call it deconstructor but destructor so destructors are exactly like constructors but they start with a tilde so you go tilde employee and you do it like that so this becomes a destructor which essentially means it will run and it will actually get executed when the object is just about to die so in here sorry I deleted it by mistake let me create it again so the destructor will be called right before the object dies so I'm gonna actually call the allocate in here and because the allocate deallocates my memory I'm not gonna let outsiders have access to it I'm gonna remove it and put it in the private section of the method of the function of the employee so now what happens is this I come over here and remove the deallocate and as soon as the, for the the program is running the pro program runs it comes to the employee as soon as it gets created it initializes it it comes over here does all the beautiful stuff it's supposed to do in display and right before the main is ending because when main ends E gets evaporated and it's gone right at that moment the destructor is called and the allocate the allocates everything and it's gone and therefore it is done automatically are we okay with this Ali you said no why 
Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't get one thing. So, does it de deallocate uh, after line ten automatically? After this line? Yes, yes. So, listen to the description of listen. Oh, you're talking about in display when I'm uh, in set when I'm calling deallocate. Is this? Oh, sorry, not there. I don't want this. I don't want this. Are you talking about this deallocate? In set, ah, uh, so, uh, so you can call the deallocate anywhere you want because it's a method of anywhere you want in the employee class because it's part of the employee, it's a private part of the employee. So you can always call the deallocate anywhere you want, but you want the allocate to be called when E, die, e is dying. And by definition, just uh, uh, I have a question. If I do something like this, Ali, answer this question. If I have something, I'm just going to write an unrelated code over here. Integer i. I'm going to write over here if uh, mm, whatever. And in here, I write integer i. And I don't know, c out i. And c out. I am out. Of if Ali tell me when I will die in this program when it exits uh, uh, yeah when it exits the if scope yes perfect so when the scope is over I dies do you agree with that yes yes all yes. right so let's remove that Now tell me when E is going to die in here. Uh, when it exits, exits uh, main function. When it exits the main function. What does it mean? It means right before main is about to end, E will die. But we instructed the compiler before E dies to call this function. So automatically it will call that function and it will be done with it. Do we understand? So I meant... Uh, yeah, I meant like uh, the automotive uh, deallocation works only when it exits the main function. Yes, so... and that's yeah, exactly Victor's point. Victor said that because deallocate is such an important thing that it has to clean up stuff, shouldn't we do it at the end of main anyway? And I said, it. we can actually make it automatic. So take a look. Take a look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to open a curly bracket for no reason and close it over here. And in here, I'm going to say C out I am out of the no reason scope. So I created the scope over here for no reason, correct? Yes. Okay, now I'm going to come in this employee and in here I'm going to print a message and I'm going to say C out creating employee Okay, and then I'm going to put a message in the destructor and I'm going to say C out, C out, uh, uh, killing <laughs> M name. Okay, so now if I run the program, see what happens. I'm going to start the program. First, it's going to say, good morning, OP244ZAA. Then the scope starts. An employee gets created. All the good things are done. When it reaches to the end of the scope, E will die. So it will go to the destructor and say, killing Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson dies and then say, I am out of the uh, no reason scope. So as you see, when an object dies, destructor is called so we can put anything necessary over there to make sure all its resources are deleted and gone are we okay with this yeah yeah thank you very much all right so that's what the destructors are good for and it's extremely important to always have all our cleanup action to done in the destructors are we okay with this
Sorry again. Um, I have a really again maybe a stupid question. No, never. Uh, in the main, uh, I always have this problem. Uh, how uh, how we know that uh, when it goes set display set display goes to the killings Homer Simpson? How how this thing works? I don't know. I don't One really more time. After after it goes like. Good morning, OP, and then create employee, and then set display, set display. Mm -hmm. How it goes to killing Homer Simpson, and then comes back to the okay. doing things. Okay, okay. So, uh, um, do you understand what a scope is? Yeah. Okay. So, do you know that this scope has actually means nothing? I just created a, an unnecessary scope. No, I see this example you said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you are saying, how does it know? Uh huh. Uh, because to when to go to the like the instructor, uh, like to and constructor and destructor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm it, sorry it, if it's not. No, that no, 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 no. It's no, no. It's just I'm just telling you. It's not how. It's a, a, a statement that I make. So I'm letting you know that the C plus plus is designed that way. When an mm -hmm. object is created, you do you understand that at line ten you are creating an employee? Yes. Creating an employee triggers a constructor. That's the rule of C++. It tr triggers this action. Mm -hmm. So anytime an object is created, its constructor mm -hmm. is triggered. I'm going to give you mm -hmm. more examples after this is employee. When employee is created, mm -hmm. immediately it's, in this case, default constructor is triggered, which we identified as this. So this uh -huh. is default constructor, or we can call it actually no argument constructor. This is what they call it, no argument constructor. Uh -huh. Because okay. in here you didn't mention any anything to E, you just said create E, it automatically triggers the default constructor. Anything you write in the default constructor will be called automatically when employee is created. That's oh, oh. the rule. So mm -hmm. if I had over here an array of 10 employees, that thing, let's put it this way. I'm going to put over here E2. So now I have two employees, correct? Uh -huh. And in here, I'm going to say E0 set, E0 display. In here, I'm going to say E1 set, and I'm going to say E2 display, correct? Yeah. Do you agree that two employees are created now? Yes. So when I run the program, you will see that as soon as I come over here, <laughs> as soon as, oops, it went too fast. As soon as I come over here, the constructor is called once mm -hmm. and it's called twice. You see? Yes. Then everything is done. The first one is, oh, 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 oh. The first one is displayed and the second one is displayed, right? And right when the scope is over, the destructor of the first one is called, as you see Homer Simpson dies, and it deallocates its memory, and then the other one. So anything that dies automatically, the destructors of them are called. You don't call them. You just okay. mention okay. in them what needs to be done when they are called. Are we okay with this? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. And that guarantees that she, it, you know what it looks like? It's like when uh, uh, when the destructors are as if when you finish eating, you just want to clean up your tape, uh, <laughs> plate and put it aside. This is something like a dishwasher for you that automatically does that for you. Oh, so right. we have to do it after any constructor. We have to do this like this. It doesn't matter where you put it. I can put it down, up, anywhere you want to put it. Said it's no. Um, I mean, both of them are necessary. Uh, if you have resources, you need mm -hmm. the destructor to be able to remove the resources, mm -hmm. and you need the constructor if you want your object to be created in a specific way. Okay. These are the the Thanks. cases. Okay. So, for example, what if I want to create an employee and give the name to it right away? If I want to do that, I can create another constructor. And this one is going to be a one argument constructor. So I'm going to say employee, employee, and I'm going to put over here constant character pointer name. So now okay. 
now I'm actually creating an employee with a mm -hmm. name so I can actually come over here and create the definition as you see I pass the name over here so I'm gonna do exactly what I have done over here so I'm gonna set the name okay and set the name and set the employee number I'm gonna say M employee number is set to zero which means it's not set and M salary is set to say zero two because it's not set okay so I just create an employee with a name if I want to do that I can I can simply add that one and now in here I can create another employee over here employee uh, um, X and I put over here John Doe and right after here I'm gonna say X dot uh, display so now a John Doe is created why my main is giving me an error it's ambiguous what the heck anyways that's I don't know what is that for where did that come from anyways let's compile it sometimes it does stuff that I don't understand so it comes over here as you see now a constructor is called that has one argument so it goes to the constructor with one argument sets the name and everything and as you see I'm not setting the name to null anymore I'm not initializing it why because it's a constructor I know everything is fresh I don't need to set anything it's the very first thing that is calling so essentially this is the action of initialization when I'm passing a name and it comes out and then the other two is created uh, I didn't print a message over there but it's okay it displays this and that and the two are dead then it's going to display John Doe with zero and zero and it goes out of the scope and kills the John Doe at the end are we okay with this Everyone? Yes. All right. All right. So next thing uh, hopefully you can hear me yes you can hear me okay so that's one argument constructor I can have two argument constructed three argument construct anywhere I any way I want it so first of all let me clean this code because it's getting too many things in it and I don't want to have it so I'm gonna I'm not I don't want to have it like this so I'm gonna save this as a um, employee main dot cpp I'm just going to create a clean one so I can do my stuff easier in it yeah so the next thing we can do is to, uh, to, to actually um, create a uh, like a two argument constructor here or three argument constructor so I'm going to say I want to create a constructor that accepts uh, 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 an employee number and a name so what I will do over here I'm gonna create another employee uh, constructor so this one's gonna be employee and it's gonna receive the same arguments as set so I'm just gonna borrow it from there so it's gonna get the employee number and everything now I'll come back over here and simply call set so now because I am calling set and set is calling the allocate I have to first initialize it to make sure it's not gonna crash so I'm gonna say in it and I'm gonna say set to name employee number and and salary so a three argument constructor now can build a uh, an employee with three three arguments in it so I can come uh, in main in here and I can say uh, so let's call this a am 
my apologies I am in a situation kind of a dire situation I need to check my phone to make sure that uh, I will receive a call if I receive it I have to leave it on my apologies if it rings I apologize again um, yeah so yeah so in here I'm gonna call it a and I'm gonna create another employee so employee B and in here I'm gonna put over here uh, Brett Soleil and I'm gonna put over here ABC um, uh, one two three four five six and salary is gonna be uh, I don't know two three four two three four point twenty two whatever <clears throat> okay now I can go B dot display and and run it and I want to attract your attention to something in here so uh, in here I'm gonna say creating employee and uh, creating a default employee default employee and in here I'm gonna say um, in this constructor I'm gonna say uh, see out creating and I'm gonna say display just to show what is being created and same thing as the other one just to keep track of what is getting created just to show you what is getting created so when I run the program you will see that it, co it comes to this point at the first one is gonna call one argument constructor as we did so creating John Doe then it's gonna come to three argument constructor go to three argument constructor initialize set create and sh shows that it shows Fred Soleil and I want to attract your attention over here it displays a and B which is fine it says well it doesn't need to I'm gonna write over here end of main so it's gonna go it's gonna print end of main and after this please pay attention in the order of objects dying so remember John Doe was made first Fred Soleil was uh, made second when they die they die in reverse order as you see Fred Soleil that was created last will die first and John Doe the next so <clears throat> the destructors are called in reverse order and everything is dead and gone um, are we okay down to this point And the next thing we need to uh, know about constructors is that like functions constructors can accept default argument values too. Like, let's say for example if the salary is not known I want the salary to be set to something so in here I'm gonna say salary will be set to zero if I don't mention what the salary is now I literally have three constructors so I can have over here John Doe and I can have another one over here let's say Jack Smith and this one's gonna be and this one's gonna be like that so when I do something like this and it was give me an error it should match oh I put it in here by mistake no uh, where did I put that thing oh I put it in set by mistake I think did I put it in set yeah my mistake it's not in set my apologies in here yeah so the employee the constructor so in the constructor I'm putting the default value for the salary now when I run the program No, what are the errors? Let me see. Multiple initialization. Did I set it over here to what one? Oh, I put two names with the C. <laughs> Sorry about that. My apologies. That's C. And and that's C. One more time. Now this is one argument constructor as you see it gets created 
and the other one goes to two argument constructor which is essentially the third one but with default values so salary becomes zero and why did Jack Smith sh got shortened in here why John do I think my pro um, uh, visual studio has a bug give me a second let me stop it completely close it and run it again yeah it was a uh, buggy execution sorry about that so there you go John Doe zero zero Jack Smith with zero and this one actually received the whole salary and it receives it like that so you can actually have the fault argument list and as you see everything ends in reverse so Fred Soleil dies first then Jack Smith then John Doe are we okay with this all right so uh, another thing that I want to mention over here was the common mistake that everybody does that um, um, and, and I want you to remember this moment this is an extremely important um, um, I want your attention so uh, So half of you are not answering either just sitting over there but I really need your attention over here okay so Victor Tao Sahar um, many people are not responding which is okay anyways so I want your attention over here to show you something. No, I'm from... responding. I'm connecting with two. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's okay. All right, good. Thank you. So now, let me just show you something in here. In here, I am. I have created an employee with one argument. Okay? So I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to reuse my code. I already have a three-argument constructor in here. See what I'm going to do. I'm going to comment this and in here I'm going to say employee name zero and zero so if you recall in here I said this is not a function so I'm going to say these are these are not functions And in here, I'm going to say they are constructors. I just want to demonstrate to you that you cannot call a constructor thinking that you are reusing your code. This looks very in innocent and nice. I would say, okay, I have a one argument constructor. I'm just going to pass the three argument constructor with zero so when you run the program over here see what happens so you come here the one argument constructor is gonna get called it comes over here and you think you are calling the constructor but take a look and pay attention over here at line 18 the constructor is called it is initialized and it is displayed it says creating John Doe 00, zero. Are we, oh, oh sorry 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 uh, the question is are we okay with this are we okay that the constructor was called okay so the constructor is called and now pay attention as I continue the execution as soon as I go to next line see what happens as soon as line 18 want to be over it kills it so at line 18 you did not call a constructor you created a nameless a temporary nameless 
employee that will die right after line 18 and it has nothing to do with the object that you're in now see constructors are to create objects they are not to be called when you call them constructor does what a constructor will do which is creating an employee at line 18 and it has nothing to do with the other one I'll show you why when we get out of here okay so the first one it's as you see it created John Doe 00 and then killed it immediately so what happened to the to the employee now when I get out and come over here if you look at a a is all garbage it's nothing in there it nothing worked it didn't happen nothing happened in here and when you come over here uh, as you see it is an answer you were lucky that it actually became zero it was we were lucky so it's an unset employee so your action of creating a constructor did not call anything so remember what I told you please do not call a constructor it is not a function it is its job is to be called when an object is created so make sure you actually do inside the const uh, when you are uh, uh, implementing your constructor make sure that you you don't recall constructors that's an incorrect thing to do uh, yeah that's that uh, are we okay with this all right so that's that now our uh, employee is good and done uh, so uh, these are oh another thing about cons uh, one argument constructors one argument constructors are are, are an interesting thing um, um, you can call a, you can have a one argument constructor in many different ways um, like uh, in here I can actually say employee a is equal to John Doe so this is the same as the top okay I'm gonna say not an assignment but uh, invoking one argument constructor so this is not an assignment happening here when you run this program you will see that it actually calls the one argument constructor so an assignment at the moment of creation ladies and gentlemen is not an assignment is a one it is a one argument construction it is actually initialization where I told you what is the difference between initialization and the other one so it happens with everything in C++ in here I can say I don't know integer uh, value and I put over here 20 I can do it like this so assignment at the moment of creation is a one argument constructor and vice versa in here if I say uh, see out value it's gonna actually print 20 for me it, it, it's exactly the same thing no difference you see that and uh, the same thing for uh, uh, and, and the, the aggregate type of initialization that I mentioned that you can actually initialize a value you can say in it value like this 20 and I said it's the same thing as the top one it doesn't make any difference okay that's a one argument constructor this is a, uh, oh. it's the same thing it's the exact same thing for all the constructors so I can call a, I can uh, um, create a const I can call a constructor like this there's absolutely no problem with it it's the exact same thing as calling a constructor with parentheses absolutely no difference it's the same way of doing it um, so these are different ways of calling a constructor are we okay to, down to this part
Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how to uh, refer to, uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to stop right here. Um, uh, uh, we are uh, on, uh, let me just bring up the content of what we are teaching today. So if we look at weekly schedule, we are right now in, uh, we are right now in week four, I believe. So construction, destruction, the current object. Are we week four? Let me check it here. Just want to make sure that we are in week four right now. So just checking the, just want to make sure I'm not making a boo boo. Yes, we are in week four. So we are in week four and we are on time. And there is only uh, one thing we need to add to this to cover it's the current object. And that's going to take around 10 minutes to go through. Um, so the next time you're coming in, we're going to only spend 10 minutes of the lab on lecture and the rest is going to be helping students. We are on track. Um, I don't want to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the current object because uh, it's going to be uh, confusing. I'm going to end the session right now and uh, when you're coming to the lab, we're going to, uh, uh, please somebody remind me, uh, yeah, for that you have to do uh, um, current object and um, let me just mute Javier over here. Oh, that's, oh, there you go. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. So please remind me. No problem, Javier. So please remind me to uh, uh, start the session for the uh, for the lab covering the current object and then after that uh, it's all helping then there is no uh, hopefully from now on we're not going to have lectures uh, during our labs uh, any question anyone any question so uh so on third uh the next lab Thursday, i think so after the 10 minutes of the lecture we're gonna have a quiz right uh probably i'm gonna do the quiz at the end of the lecture at the end of the lab and have like an hour to help the students with the work they are doing. Okay, great. And then in also in the future workshop, if you like, if you have a different like man that is going to test our code, can you also just mention it in the readme file so that we are prepared for it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, yeah, maybe I can put that. Yeah, it really was challenging. The problem, the thing is that, yes, it, um, uh, again, please, uh, re, re, you have to realize that you're, you have to, sure, I'll do that. I'll put that main over that. I'll add the prof main over there for you to know too. But uh, um, the whole idea of the main is to be different. So the output is not manufactured. You yeah, find, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. So you can just, what, what uh, and this happened many times before. So what happened is that, they run the submitter, they captured the output, and they just had a print statement to print that output. Okay, you do, I don't want that. Yeah, of course, of course, okay. I understand. Okay, it's right. just like we're not that level yet. So, if we, if we, so a lot of my friends like we are doing it and they run so fine on our thing, and then it's like already Saturday or Sunday, and then now we're gonna test on a different thing, so we're gonna. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. I'll mention that it's going to be. A yeah, different. I had this problem, Professor. I uh, tried it in Visual Studio and it worked many times. And when I tried to submit it, it didn't uh, submit okay. because it was differences. And I couldn't submit yesterday. I already sent a message to you, too. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, I'll, make, I'll send it the other time and we'll see. All right. Harold, yeah. you had a question. Yeah. Actually, the, the main problem on the, on the workshop, too, is like, uh, on the GitHub, uh, the the program on the main is really different on the main prof that CPP. I mean, there's there's a loop on the main prof, but on the give, Git. Give me a second. Let me just uh, bring it up because uh, this is uh, I don't believe it's it, it makes sense. So you're talking about workshop what? Which workshop you're talking about? I mean, workshop two part two. Workshop, 
workshop to yeah, point to. So yeah. So yeah, workshop. I even gave it to ChatGPT to see what what is I'm doing wrong, and it didn't bring Just anything. Give me a second. Give me a second, people. Give me a second. Documents actually OP two four four. Workshop two, you said, right? An extension about this one it was really hard. Workshop yeah, two. workshop two part two. Workshop. DIY. Yeah, DIY. So this is the main that you had for workshop two. That's DIY. Let me see. So this is the one that you had. Is this the? Uh, this is the one from <laughs> Matrix, but on GitHub mean... it's different. No, this is not the one we have. <laughs> okay, so you're saying uh, it is, it is without the loop. It's like it's load only. Only. yes, <laughs> that's that's what I did that to make sure that you deallocate the memory properly, not only doing it once. Doing no, it the thing is like uh, in GitHub we don't have a while loop. So, for example, yesterday I could uh, make my code and added for loop, uh, while loop and all this stuff in the code. And when I tried to submit, I saw the errors and I saw that the main is completely different. So I needed to completely change my code. That was yeah, the problem. The original code we have, I send it in the chat. Give me a second. Give me a second. No, 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 no. no. I'll, 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 I'll show you the, the, the release too. So the, I just want to see what you're talking about when you see they're different. I want to see how. So actually, as I see over here, I put them both over there for you. You have main no, and pro. But no, not in GitHub. Not in GitHub, but anyways, let me just see what is the difference between the two. Let me, so it's remove this one. So this one loads one. Yeah, and this one yeah, it, this one only checks for one postal code, and this one checks for many. Yeah, but the thing also is that uh, in GitHub, in explanation, it says about load functions that you see with the name of file and with the prefix. Okay, sure, but... sure. I'll, I'll put them both. I'll put them both. Uh, okay, Can you girl. please give an extension, like one day at least, because I really tried and it didn't go through. I have to check. No, I don't give extensions lightly. I have to see. Bec there is what I see over here in this main and in this main. I don't see anything different but asking the function that I ask you to write. And it's supposed to work with your application to work over there. I'll double check. If, if what you're saying is valid, I'll do it, but highly unlikely. Okay? Uh, also, please check like the load function, the header. Like you pass in in the one, you pass in only the name of file. In the second, you pass in two arguments. So number of arguments different. It all also was really confusing, because like in GitHub it says we cannot change main function. So I had a lot of troubles because of that. Okay, I'll double check. I'll double check. So it is. This is the DIY, right? Yeah. Okay, yes. I'll, yes. I'll double check. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank, All you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, have yourself a beautiful day, and I'll talk to you uh, the next day when we are coming to school. Oh, I think there's another student has question, but oh, I okay, think okay, okay. Was, you can overload your. Can you hear me at all? I think I think he's. Well, we can't hear him. Okay, you can overload your load function. Yes. No, I Hello. Can't see can you hear me? Yeah. I can oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, so because one of the uh, the main fun the main dot cpp file you uploaded to your GitHub, it has only if as a statement, yes. and uh, it's and it's not a loop, and because and the expected output in the GitHub file, it's expecting your output to be a loop, and not like to, oh, to so test just one case, data value. Wrong. If that's the case, that's wrong. So the yeah. expected output was for the main, but the other one was okay. I'll give you extension if that's because the... otherwise it would make perfect sense. But because if the, if it is if and the expected output in the GitHub you put is still a loop, but like I still managed to make it work. But it's like the like make it You're work around. Right. 
He was like, it so, doesn't make sense. I understand. I understand. I'll fix it. And I was like having like an argument with my friends over yesterday because it's like the logic doesn't make sense if it's like only if like you can still technically make it work, but it's like okay. it's like the logic is all messed up. Okay, I'll do it. I'll give it an extension. That makes sense. Perfect. I think the, uh, the, uh, the, the question the for was... Ali is like you know like different arguments you can just make like an overloading your load function so creating two different load functions but I think you should definitely include it in the GitHub file if it's like expected for student to create Actually, like no. two but different... in DIY I don't do that. In oh okay. DIY you have to recognize if you need to make it two functions overloaded that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. It's just like you know, yeah, like but the one. Output, is like I, I should have like given you. I should have given you the expected output from main. If I didn't, then that's my mistake. I'll fix that. Okay, thank you. Thank no you. problem. All right, everyone, have yourself a beautiful day. I'll double check again to make sure everything is good, and I'm gonna give you the extension and tell to all sections to give extension if needed. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a beautiful Excuse day, me. everyone. Yes, yes. Somebody said, excuse me. Thank you. Have oh, a good no, day. No, no. Bye. Bye, everybody. Yeah, Professor, when do, we, when do we hear back from you? On what? On what? As regards the extension or the correction. Oh, I, or... by, by end of today. Okay. You're gonna and you an, give us... You, you, you're going to see an announcement on Microsoft Teams. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So should we, should we, we still go ahead to submit or should we hold on for you? Uh, Victor, there is a... Dash feedback. <laughs> dash feedback. You use dash feedback. If you can submit with the one that is doing main prof now, do submit it. You're fine. But you can okay. wait. Uh, uh, I will extend it. But wait to the end of tonight. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a beautiful day. Bye, everyone.